D3 transitions are one of those things that makes D3 kind of unique. And you can leverage transitions to give a wow factor to your data visualizations. We're going to be writing the code that handles the case of enter, like this, making the circles grow, update by moving the circles around, and exit by transitioning these circles to be radius zero and then removing their DOM elements. I'll start by forking this viz and calling it D3 transitions. Let's implement an animation where all of these circles start really small and then grow in size. To do that, we'll need to import transition from D3 and then Whenever this code runs, I'm going to create a new transition instance. I'll call it T, which is a convention for transitions in the D3 world. And we can invoke transition like that. On this transition instance, we can set the duration. I'll set it to 2000, so we can make it really slow. This will be two seconds. The duration here is in milliseconds. In order to actually get this to do something, we need to move from this shorthand version of dot join to the more explicit form where we deal with enter, update, and exit separately. So with the enter selection, we just append circles. The update selection is a no op. And with the exit selection, we call exit dot remove. This right here is just the expanded form of the shorthand. So the behavior of this is exactly the same as the behavior of this, passing in circle. Now that we have this expanded form, we can leverage transitions. It's important that this function returns this selection here. So if we call dot transition like this, this is not going to work because then it will return this transition from this function and it'll mess up with everything. This is why we need to use selection.call. Selection.call will invoke this function with the selection that it was invoked on. And no matter what this function returns, .call will return the selection that it was called on. That's why we need to use selection.call when we create transitions like this. We can say selection.transition t passing in our transition instance and then we can call dot attr to set various attributes such as cx and cy. I'm just going to move this logic into here and also the radius. This is not quite right because what we want to do actually is initialize the CX and CY immediately. So I'll move that over to here like this. So when we append the circle, it will get CX and CY. But when the circle is created initially, I would like the radius to be set to zero and then it should grow to its full radius after some time. To get the circles to disappear, I'm going to call dot data with empty array, and then I'll pass data again to trigger this behavior and see if it works correctly. And there it is. It worked. That's how you get circles to grow in size when they are appended. Now, when I delete these circles or pass in an empty array for data and run it, that triggers the exit selection, which just removes everything. But I would also like to transition that so that these circles shrink down to zero and then get removed. And with exit, by the way, I don't think it really matters what this function returns. It's just important that enter and update return the correct thing. So. I don't think we need to use dot call here. So I think we can say exit dot transition t dot attr r to zero dot remove. 
So let's see if that works. I'll pass in data and run it. The things grow. And then if I pass empty array and run it, they do shrink down. All right. That's how you can transition circles so that they grow into existence and shrink out of existence. But what about when they move around? When I drag these numbers, it's not actually moving the circle at all. That's because we haven't really handled the update case. Now for update, since we do need to return the update selection, I'll, I'll use update.call, a function that takes as input the selection, and then we can make a transition on that selection. And instead of setting R, I'd like to just set x and y, or rather cx and cy. Now, if I move these circles, it does move, but it's not really very smooth. It doesn't quite start moving until I stop moving. See, it starts to move smoothly, and then when I change the value, it stops abruptly. And that's because the easing function is the default. Let's take a look at the documentation. This is the D3 documentation site, which is an amazing reference for all the various D3 functions. The documentation for transition.ease says that it defaults to ease cubic. That's a shape that looks something like this. So every time the transition starts, it goes very slow and then it moves to its desired location. There are a number of easing functions. Ease elastic kind of has this nice bouncing effect. But I find for interactions, like the hot reloading that we're doing, ease linear usually works best. But I do love the default for the entering and exiting. So I think what I'll do is this. I'll rename this first transition to slow, and I'll use it for enter and exit. So now we're using slow in enter and also slow for exit. But for update, I want to use a different one that uses ease linear. I'll call this fast. This will be also a transition, but with a lower duration maybe 500 milliseconds. And then I'll set ease to be ease linear. And ease linear, we need to import from D3. So now, if I change X and Y for these, it moves very, very smoothly because the, uh, the transitions, when they get interrupted, they move at roughly the same speed. This is the magic of ease linear. Now, when I comment out one of these entries, ideally, the circle corresponding to this data element would exit. But watch what happens. When I run this, they all sort of shift around, and one of them exits. And then when I bring it back, we have that sort of a transition. And this is because, by default, when you call dot data and pass in data, in order to join the DOM elements to the data elements, it uses the index in the array, which is like 0, 1, 2, like that. But that's not what we want. And this is the importance of the second argument to dot data, which is the key function. It's a function that takes as input one of these data elements and it returns a unique ID that uniquely identifies that one particular data element. So what I'll do is I'm going to use d.id. And for each of these data elements, I will introduce an ID, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now, if I comment one of these out and rerun it, it actually does disappear. That was that small blue one here. Now if I comment out the big circle one and run it, you see just that one will disappear. 
So that's the importance of this key function. It provides a unique identity that lets the D3 data join correctly do the right thing. One last thing I want to talk about is transition delays. Notice how when these exit, they shrink at, at the exact same time. And when they enter, they grow at the exact same time. Using delay, we can stagger these uh, introductions of the circles to give kind of a wow factor, cool effect. To do that, we can say dot transition dot delay, passing a function that takes as input D, one of our data elements, and also the index of that data element in the array. And we can say something like I times 500 milliseconds. And notice what effect that has. When they enter, now they all enter at different times. And we can tweak these values, like make it a little bit longer, make this delay a little bit shorter, to get a really nice effect. So that when these all enter, they enter in like that. So that's a brief introduction to D3 transitions. To recap, we import transition from D3. We use it to make new instances of transitions where we can set the duration in milliseconds and the easing function. And then with our circles, we use the expanded form of dot join that takes as input a function that handles the enter selection, a function that handles the update selection, and a function that handles the exit selection. Now, because dot join returns the merged enter and update selections, it's critical that these two functions return the right thing. Namely, enter should return enter.append circle, and update should return the update selection. That's why we need to use dot call to break out into these transitions. Because dot call will actually return the selection that it's called on, no matter what this function returns. To make the circles grow into existence, we start them off at their correct locations, x and y, but then we set the radius to zero when they are first created. After they are created, we set up a transition on that selection that ultimately transitions the radius to be its correct radius from the data. We use dot delay to get this kind of popcorn effect. So for reference, here's what it looks like without delay. All the circles appear at the exact same time. And then with delay, the circles appear one at a time with a slightly staggered delay. That's because the delay is set to the index of the array times 200 milliseconds. So the first one will not be delayed at all. The second one will start growing 200 milliseconds after the first one. And the third one will start growing 200 milliseconds after the second one, and so on. For the update selection, we use a fast transition to set the x and y position of the circle. The fast transition uses ease linear, which works really well for interactions like this hot reloading. It lets us smoothly change these values, and the uh, circles update quite smoothly. Lastly, this function that handles exit transitions the radius from whatever it was to zero, and then after that, removes the DOM element. And we're still setting the fill and opacity outside the call to dot join. And this still works because dot join returns the merged enter and update selections. So no matter if the circle is newly appended or it was there before, fill will get set and so will opacity. Lastly, the key function, the second argument to dot data, is critical 
for telling D3 which DOM elements to resolve to which data elements. Now if we don't put that, then the index in the array will be used. In that case, if we remove one of these elements and rerun the code, it will sort of shift things around because the identity of these things down below will change. The ID of these will essentially be decremented by one, which is not what we want. And so when that happens, the circle that was previously associated with this data entry here is now going to be associated with the next one down. And then the circle that was previously associated with this one will now be associated with the next one down. And then this one will actually trigger the exit. That's what happens if we remove this element here. That's why these things move around. But that's not what we want. What we want is to use the ID in the key function, the second argument, to dot data. Using that ID, which comes from this field here, will ensure that if these things get removed, then the correct circle will be removed or added to the DOM. And we could even do things like reorder these things. And when it reruns, nothing will change. But check it out. If we don't include that key function and we reorder these things, then they will shift around because their identity is defined by their position in the array. So that's why it's important to specify this key function when you use transitions. That's how you can use D3 transitions.